Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to continue talking about electromagnetic waves, and specifically, I want to look at some of the common behavior of these waves. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some of the common behaviors. One of the first things you see in these types of waves is this behavior of reflection. So reflection refers to when, I'm going to say light, but it really is, is photons of any wavelength that strike a material and they reflect at the same incident angle. Okay, so if you come in at 45 degrees, it'll actually reflect and head off into at, at 45 degrees. And so you can think about like a mirror, like if you shine a laser into a mirror, that would be an example of reflection. But that is so it's a property of the material that the light actually strikes. Another behavior is absorption. Now absorption is where you take the energy of the photon and it is actually absorbed into the material. And if you think about it, that energy, the you know, the basically the electromagnetic wave is it hits the material and it actually stimulates or energizes electrons in the material and it actually will transfer heat to it. Okay, so heat energy is heat. And so it'll actually transfer the energy and it energizes the material in the form of uh, electrons that are raised up into higher orbitals of higher energy. And as we looked at in the last video, then at some point those electrons will move back down in, into a lower energy orbital and they will then release yet another photon. Okay, and so that's kind of the absorption. So it's a transfer of energy from the light packet itself, the photon, into a, into a material. There's also a phenomenon called uh, diffraction. And so diffraction is where you take light and you go through uh, some sort of grating. And let me, like, for example, a slit or a hole in some material. And what happens is it will actually bend and spread the light. Okay, so if light comes in at a unit direction, it can actually be directed in other other directions in order to actually go around some object. Okay, so now. It's, it's obviously gonna go in one direction once it's heading that direction. It's not gonna like do a curve unless you do something weird. But uh, but it's, it's just a way that you can actually spread out the light. Uh, another thing is scattering. So scattering is different from diffraction in that when you light hits something and it scatters, it goes in every direction. Okay, so it just like <laughs> blow, <laughs> you know, it, you're not controlling where it's going. So it's basically random where it heads. And then there's refraction. And refraction is where you can change the direction of light. Now, this image right here is, is a prism. Okay, so this is a glass prism or a crystal prism. And what it shows, this is the most common image you typically see when you talk about light or optics or anything like that. What you see is white light. Now, white light uh, is all the wavelengths of our visible band together. Okay, so that's why it's white. We don't have a, a wavelength that corresponds to white. What we do is we have wavelengths that correspond to all the different, uh, basically all the different colors within the visible band of the EM spectrum. And if you take them all together, you get white light. And so this, this prism right here will actually take the individual colors and it will bend them at a different angle depending on their wavelength. So the output of a prism basically looks like a rainbow. And it's really cool because this was one of the first ways that they discovered that white light consisted of all the colors in the visible spectrum. And so, but you can do this if you hit it with like one color, like blue in, blew out, right? You can actually bend the direction of a specific wavelength. Uh, so that's called refraction. Okay, some of the things that engineers and scientists have learned to do with uh, electromagnetic waves is polarize them, okay? And so what polarization is, is where you change the angle between the electric wave, electric field line, or the electric field, the electric wave, and the magnetic wave. So this image right here, this, this image is showing uh, an electric, field and a magnetic field that are 90 degrees from each other, okay? And this is called a transverse electrical wave, meaning that they just happen to be, the wave front is in a plane and the E field and the B field are 90 degrees with respect to each other. But you can put this through material and you can actually bend the polarity of one of the fields or both of the fields at the same time. So you can align them, you can make them go in a circle, you can make them do different things. And there's a variety of applications that uh, engineers have found that this is useful for. So one of them is, is a color filter. So you can actually have materials that will only allow red to pass or will block everything, you know, every color except for green. Uh, so filters are an example of that. Uh, you know, whenever you hear polarized, you know, polarization, you always think of like UV or 
you yeah polarized sunglasses so you can actually have glare reduction uh in a pair of sunglasses so it's a material that you put on the glass and it, it basically gets rid of the glare so you can actually see better and so that's an example of a polarized application uh, material stress analysis is another big one so you can basically look at materials through polarized lenses and you can see different colors and that and it ex and it'll actually show you if there's cracks that might exist at certain of certain sizes and then a, a final one is 3d video okay uh, okay so let's talk about really quick the the earth radiation in the earth so this is an image that shows the atmosphere and what gets through to the surface of the earth okay in the universe you can think of every wavelength of light exists it's coming from the stars all these different stars of different sizes and different shapes uh, and it's all coming okay so it's all coming to hit earth and the atmosphere actually blocks a great deal of the radiation or the electromagnetic energy that hits earth and and it depends on the wavelength so let's go ahead and start at kind of the lower or the larger wavelengths of the lower frequencies so down in the radio waves a lot of it is is blocked or what we say the atmosphere is opaque it doesn't let it go through for the very 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 slow stuff and once you get up to you know above like a hundred you know like let's see what is this this is like gigahertz megahertz then there's a window where it will allow radio waves in and we can send radio waves out so that's how we're able to communicate with satellites okay so uh this is cool because that's it was kind of like the first way that we had wireless communication so we can send radio waves and the atmosphere won't reflect it back down to us this is also how we use uh, like radio telescopes so we look at the radio waves that come from other planets and we can tell stuff about them okay notice that radio telescopes they're not it's not visible right it's we're detecting waves that our eyes can't see but we can build instruments that'll allow us to look at that thing in a different way uh yeah so it's awesome uh all the way up to microwaves you you allow or the atmosphere allows the energy in and then once you get to microwaves it blocks a lot of it okay almost all of it this is a good thing because remember a microwave oven cooks things okay <laughs> so if we didn't have an atmosphere that blocked microwaves we'd all be dead right i mean we'd be dead if without the atmosphere hands down uh but this is really good because we're going to get cooked alive by microwaves and luckily the atmosphere blocks it <laughs> then you have a little dip and the infrared kind of gets in here where you can see a little bit of it uh, but then it's like this really interesting thing where some infrared is attenuated more than others uh, throughout the infrared band. And then you get to visible. And look at old visible. Visible lets everything through. So we, that's why we have eyeballs that can see everything. It's because our eyes work within this little range, this small sliver of wavelengths or frequencies within the spectrum. Then we get to ultraviolet. And you'll notice that ultraviolet, it blocks a whole lot of it. And then from there on out, the atmosphere blocks x-rays, it blocks gamma rays and it blocks all sorts of you know everything else but the ultraviolet is kind of interesting because ultraviolet you know like we think about getting burned uh like from the sun like a summer well it turns out that within the spectrum that we associate with ultraviolet the atmosphere and the ozone actually blocks some of it completely so we classify uv into a b and c depending on the wavelength and uv c blocks completely okay none of that gets to earth uvb about 90 percent of it is blocked uva all of it gets through okay so we, when we put sunscreen on we're like we gotta get rid of that uva and also some of the uvb okay but at the same time uv in light doses is good for us but it's not you don't want to sit out there and just bake yourself 24 hours a day okay let's look at the radiation budget of the earth really quick remember radiation is energy okay so the wavelength the frequency is directly proportional to the energy of a photon and that's also directly proportional to the to heat and so if you look at the, the temperature of our planet what happens is that you have wavelengths that come in that we call short wave radiation so this is visible this is radio and some portion of the ultraviolet and what happens is it comes through and then it actually can be reflected by the atmosphere so like clouds it'll actually reflect it or particles that are in the atmosphere so it can sometimes reflect it and send it back into outer space other parts are absorbed by the atmosphere so if you have water or kind of aerosols that are in the 
in the uh, atmosphere, that's material. And it can actually absorb some material, or excuse me, absorb the energy, and it warms up. And then other parts uh, make it all the way to the surface, and you have the surface that actually either reflects or absorbs energy. Now, when it absorbs energy, the surface of the Earth gets hot. And so if you, could, you, know, you go out and touch a, a pavement in the summer, it's warm. But if it's reflected, then it stays cold because it doesn't absorb it. So that's what happens when you have like a snow packed field. The, all the light that hits it is reflected and it stays cold, okay? All right, uh, one of the things that happens with the greenhouse effect, so this is like when you start thinking about global warming, is what's really happening is that we put stuff into the atmosphere, so like carbon, okay? And we put like, and then that in turn like makes more water in the air. And essentially what we're doing is we're putting more stuff into the atmosphere. And that is an issue because, and, we're, and it, it comes from fossil fuels. So we burn fossil fuels and we're just putting like, you know, I was thinking of it as like uh, smoke. <laughs> You're just putting a bunch of crap in the air. And what happens is that the radiation comes in and it actually is absorbed by the stuff in the atmosphere. That in turn warms the air and it warms the air at different levels depending on what's in it. So it's like there's little low air, which is what we feel, but it also can warm it up in the upper upper parts of our atmosphere. And then what happens is it kind of builds on itself because the warmer it is and it, it holds more water and then it absorbs more. And so that's kind of what uh, what's happening with global warming when people talk about global warming in the greenhouse effect, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about material that sits in our atmosphere that is absorbing this uh, electromagnetic radiation that is not blocked by our atmosphere and actually makes it into the lower parts of our atmosphere. Okay, so let's end with looking at two common questions that people bring up whenever you talk about electromagnetic radiation. First is, why is the sky blue? So now that we have all this information about what light is and what makes it through our atmosphere, which is the visible visible spectrum, uh, we can answer this question. So number one, the blue photons that come in into our atmosphere, make it through the atmosphere, uh, have a shorter or on the same order of magnitude in size, okay, as the nitrogen and oxygen in our atmosphere. So what happens is that when they strike the oxygen and nitrogen, they scatter, okay, and we know what that means now. And what happens is that when we look up, all the other colors continue straight through and hit our eyeballs, and we see that as essentially white light. It's white light without the blue, but it's, it's interpreted as white light. But what happens is that we see blue everywhere else. So as we look around the sky, we're seeing all these scattered blue photons that appear to be everywhere. So you, you must be asking yourself, it's like, wait a minute, doesn't everything scatter? And then the answer is yes, everything does scatter. The wavelength of blue, it just happens to be more on the scale of the size of oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere than the other category or the other photons. So it scatters more. So it, it uh, scatters 10 times more than red, which is at the other, the very end of the visible spectrum. But you know, you're sitting there going, well, what about blue? Blue isn't even at the end of the spectrum, isn't violet? And it turns out, yes, violet does scatter scatter, but violet, and violet scatters more than blue. It's just that our eyes are more sensitive to blue, so we actually see more blue. That's the dominant color that we see. So that's why the sky is blue. The sky is not blue because it reflects off of the ocean. Okay, that is not, that's a, that's a myth. <laughs> it is simply because the blue photons are, are scattering off of oxygen and nitrogen in our atmosphere. Okay, so now why are sunsets red? Well, this one's interesting. If you think about where you're standing relative to the sun when the sun sets or rises, the light from the sun, which is white light, has to travel a longer distance to reach your eyes, okay? So if you look at this picture right here, when the sun is directly overhead, it doesn't have to go as far, but when it's way down here at the, at the cusp of going behind the earth, it has to travel through the same atmosphere plus get all the way across the distance of the earth that you're standing at, okay? And so why that's important is because it gives the shorter wavelengths longer time to scatter or longer distance to scatter. So violet, blue, and green are gonna scatter more and they go in every direction. They, some hit the earth, some go up. Uh, and you know, you look up and the sky is still blue, right? So we still see that blue scattering up. But when they scatter down and hit the earth, they, they, they can either reflect or get absorbed. Uh, 
but the longer wavelengths don't scatter as much. So that's what we end up seeing at our eyes. Okay, so if you look at this image right here, you see all the shorter wavelengths actually scattering and they don't make it to our eyes. But what gets to our eyes are the longer wavelengths. So that is gonna be the red, the orange, and the yellow. And that is why sunsets are red. All right, that is it. That is kind of the basic description of the behavior of electromagnetic waves and see ya.